to worship today, especially if you might be visiting with us or visiting because you're here for a baptism celebration. We're glad we, that you can be with us and we celebrate that wonderful gift that is given through God and by God. And when we get to that time where we have the baptism, especially if you are one of our young people in the back and if you want to come closer to see the baptism, we invite you forward at that time as well or family. Uh, if you are having trouble seeing and would like to shift, feel free to do so for the baptism. Uh, we do have more announcements at the end of worship as well as fellowship time that is downstairs following worship, and we hope that you can stay for that as well. We will begin today with our ringing of the bell and a meditative musical moment. Isn't he 
join with me in the call to worship. Welcome to the celebration of the life of Jesus Christ. This is our joyful Let us listen with our ears, see with our eyes, and be open in our minds. We will receive what God has for us. Yes, we will celebrate our Creator's love by offering ourselves in worship and love. Speak to us, Lord. And we will hear what you have to say, and we will follow you as you lead. We'll join together to sing our opening hymn, Lord Be Glorified. The words will be up on the screen or 744 in the Maroon Hymnal. to stand if you are able as we join together in our time of confession and forgiveness. God is the light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. Holy Creator, we confess that we have not loved you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Holy Father, forgive us. We confess that we have not loved one another as you have commanded us. The Apostle Paul writes, I urge you in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. 
This is your spiritual act of worship. Holy Father, help us not to conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Then we will be able to test and approve what your will is, your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Here is our assurance. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, that if we believe in him, God will reconcile us to himself and no longer count our sins against us. Thanks be to God. You may be seated for our scripture hymn. <clears throat> Lord, let my heart be good so open to the seed of your word. Scripture reading today is from Romans 8, verses 26 through 39. These words celebrate the depth of God's actions for us. Through Christ's death for us and the activity of the Spirit praying for us, we are fused to God's love poured out in Jesus Christ. Nothing, not even death itself, is able to separate us from such incredible divine love. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us who is against us, he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll join to, together to sing, Let the Children Come to Me. And I invite all the children forward for children's time. And we're actually going to stand kind of right over in this area. We're going to do a little project. Let the children come to me. Let the children come, never end with him, never stop them. Oh, let the children come. Let the 
Good morning. This is a little different, right? We're not sitting down on the step. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear in a little bit some more parables that Jesus tells. Does anybody remember what a parable is? Uh-uh. It's like a really, really short story. And the parables that Jesus tells today are really short. They're like one line. Like sometimes people give a one-liner joke. Well, these are kind of like one, two-liner stories that he talks about, uh, and the one that I want to talk about with you, ha do you know what's in here? What do I have? I've got some flour. It's about flour, and it's about yeast. Does anybody know what yeast is for? Bread. Do any of you make bread? Yeah, you do? Oh. I should have asked you ahead of time to make some nice homemade bread. Isn't that the best smell? When you walk in and you, you know somebody's making bread. So the yeast helps the dough rise, right? And you need to add it together. Well, I'm wondering if there's a volunteer here who would like to add the yeast to our flour. Anybody? Okay. Why don't we have... Aiden, you come over. Aiden and Corbin can each try to pour a little bit in here. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah, you might want to come closer to check it out. It's a little different color than the flower. So you can see. Okay. Anybody else want to pour some in? You see, you can see that it's a, dip, a little different. All right. Should we pour all of it in? Should we? Okay. Let's pour all of it in. All right. Now, is there somebody who'd like to shake it up? Oh, here. You want to shake that? Shake that jar. Rah. Yeah. Shake it up. Shake. Okay, should we check it out? Anybody else need another shake? Laura, you, you want to get Oh, we'll let Laura. I know. Okay. All right. Now let's look. Do you see the yeast? Is it harder to see? Maybe just a couple different colors? All right, I need another volunteer. All right, Aiden. Aiden oh, 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 you want to volunteer too? All right, now I'd like the two of you to separate and pick out the yeast from the flour. You ready? How about if I do that? Can you? No? Why not? You can't, right? It's all mixed in there, isn't it? Can you, it looks maybe a little couple different colors, right? But that would be, can you see? Can you see, should we part a little bit so you can see? Can you see the yeast in there? No, it's all mixed in. And you know what is so awesome about this little strange little experiment we did and about the parable with the yeast and the flour is that did you know that God's love is like that too? That we get this wonderful gift of God's love and we're going to have that shown in the baptism, in Slate's baptism. And then it gets all mixed up in all your life. Every little bit of your life, right? Everything you do has God's love. So no matter where you go, whether you're in a church or you're outside or on a horse or at the store, God's love is with you, right? Because it's all around you, all in you, all over you. Just like we can't separate it out of here, we can't take God's love away from you, right? Not at all. And that is super news. I think that's super news, that God's love is always with us. So why don't we say a prayer? You can repeat after me, we'll say a prayer. And then maybe Russell will grab the candy basket, so if you'd like a piece of candy. All right. Dear God. Thank you for your love. Thank you that nothing can take away your love. Amen. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to see if Russell can grab that basket. And if you'd like, you can have a treat and bring back. But ask, ask a parent or a grandparent if it's okay. To me. Children come, never hinder them, never stop them. Oh, let the children come. 
Please stand if you are able for our gospel acclamation. According to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts and minds be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So here we go. Jesus is telling more parables. Again and again, he's telling parables. And it's a little bit funny at the end because he asks again. He asks them, do you understand what I'm saying? And instead of the disciples saying, you know, come away and explain them. Let us know what these mean. They say, yes, Jesus, we understand what you're saying. And I wonder if they really do, or they've just been to the point where they're just so confused with all these stories that they're like, yes, Jesus, we understand. Maybe we can move on now. For we have these interesting parables, one after another, these stories that talk about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and what it is like. Not what it is, but what it is like. And Jesus picks some pretty interesting things to compare the kingdom of heaven to. For if we think about it, we have the kingdom of heaven being compared to a fast-growing weed. We have the kingdom of heaven being compared to a little tiny thing that when added to flour, it's actually a contaminant. It's something that pollutes and gets all over. And that's what Jesus decides to use as a comparison to the kingdom of heaven. It seems like we could maybe find some better choices for what to compare the kingdom of heaven to. And yet there could be a reason that Jesus decides on this very thing. For both of those things, once they take hold, they take over and they are spread over everything. All we have to do is look out our doors, right? And we see the sea of yellow on the hills. Have you ever tried to pull one of those out? I have, and they are a bit tough. They are rooted in and they're there. The kingdom of heaven is like that. It takes over, it spreads, and it infiltrates everything. It's pretty amazing to think what happens when that word of God is scattered? We've had that in our parables, the word of God being scattered. It's amazing to think 
what happens in our own lives, in our communities, in our churches, when God's word takes hold and spreads. Look out, right? You never know who's going to be welcomed in because the word of God has spread to them. You never know what is going to happen, what you'll be called to do when the word of God has taken hold of you and a hold of your life. It spreads beyond whatever we could imagine. For these parables confront us with a God who can transform anyone and anything. Are you ready for that? These parables got me thinking about that kind of change and that kind of transformation when anyone else would maybe let go and not try something. When that takes a hold and something amazing happens. I heard a story recently on the radio about just that kind of thing. And it reminded me of what the Word of God does when it takes hold. There's a college, it's in India, and it's called the Barefoot College. And it's not a college that you're, we would probably go to because it is a college for the poorest of the poor in the poorest places and villages around the world. And their focus actually is to educate the grandmothers because grandmothers, they say, are change agents. They are the ones that will go back into their communities and change will happen and take hold. So they travel and they find, and it's those who may not even know how to read and write in these villages, and they take the grandmothers and they bring them for six months to this college and they don't get a degree, a diploma, but what they get is they learn something that will affect change in their village. They might be learning to be a solar engineer. How do they create solar power to run things in their village? They learn all those skills and they go back to their village and they make that change. Maybe it's clean water. They don't have clean water. So they are trained on how to create the cleansing system for wells and they go back and make that change. Now the founder of this concept, he was asked in an interview, well, aren't you concerned that that will create conflict? That it'll be too much much disruption when that grandmother goes back, too much difference on that woman who's now educated and goes back into her village. And you know what he said? He said, that's exactly what we want. Because when conflict happens, people realize something's going on and then change happens. Such a small thing, who else is going to even look at those who are illiterate uneducated and think that they can cause change to an entire village. That story I think is amazing. And it reminds me so much of what God does for us as well. If you know what TED Talks are, they you can watch them online and it's usually people who have a concept or an idea that they want to share. And so they do a TED Talk, and it's short. You know, it's like those nice short sermons. If you, if you like short sermons, you would like TED Talks. <laughs> There's one out there, it was six minutes, six minutes long. And I invite you to go find it, and it's called Everyday Leadership. And it's Drew Dudley who is speaking about everyday leadership. And he says that we give up sometimes on being a leader because we think it's got to be some huge concept, some major thing. And so we don't do anything because we think there's no way that I could do something like that. He even asks crowds of people to raise their hand if they think they're a leader. And usually less than half will raise their hands up in the air. And then he wants people to reconsider what they think as being a leader and what it takes to be a leader. For he shares a story, he calls it a lollipop moment, a simple story about when he was young and he had an interaction with somebody that he didn't even remember. 
and he was doing, handing out lollipops for a fundraiser event. And it wasn't until four years later that this woman came back to him and told him that when he interacted with her and handed her this lollipop and made her laugh and, and you go on to hear the story, that that changed her life. It changed her life because she was about to make a decision about whether to go to school or not. And it completely changed her life. And he didn't even remember that moment. And yet that moment where he was interacting with someone became a life-changing moment, not just something small, but something that affected the rest of her life in one little moment. See, when God gets a hold of us, we may not even realize the effect that we're having on somebody else. When God gets a hold of us, something that may seem so small is actually something that affects our whole life. We come today to celebrate something that seems like such a simple thing, a baptism, water, some words. It doesn't even take that long. And yet, that very act we do because we're commanded to do by God, and that very act affects a whole life and all the lives that Slate will touch as he grows. He grows in, in, as he ages, but also as he grows in faith as well. It seems like such a small, simple thing, and we do it because we know it's God's gift for us. And yet the power that that simple act can do sometimes is beyond words. We don't even know. How will God transform your life this week? It could be something big. It could be something in a simple act or response that stays with you and affects you or somebody near you as well. For these parables that are comparing what the kingdom of heaven is like reminds us that the kingdom of heaven is just not, is not just something far away or the not yet or something we'll go to someday. These parables comparing to the kingdom of heaven is a reminder that we have glimpses of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, right here today. Right here today. Glimpses of the kingdom of heaven. What if we were bold enough to do something small in God's name, in our community, in our churches, in our own lives, knowing that it could go beyond anything that we could ever imagine? Would we let go of our fear and do it? Would we raise our hands and say, yes, I am a leader, knowing that it could be just that something small that brings the faith and the word of God's love to someone who needs to hear it, and it could be life-changing to them as well. I pray this day as you go out into your weeks that you will open your eyes and your hearts and your minds to the glimpses of God, the kingdom of heaven around you. Open your eyes, your hearts, and your minds because it may be you that is bringing that glimpse to someone else as well. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I invite Slate and his family and sponsors to come forward. And again, if there's any young people who are in the back who'd like to get a little closer, you can come up in the front here. The family should have uh, the bulletins. Um, everyone else, it'll be up on the screen to follow along with the baptismal service. So again, we are thankful that, ooh, <laughs> excuse you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, thankful for you to think of this gift that you'd like to give to Slate, and that we get to celebrate that together as a community. We'll follow along here. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So I ask you, parents and sponsors, do you present Slate Jean Shorb to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, we do. Some would wait until Slate is old enough to choose for himself. And we here as a church proclaim that in baptism it is God who is choosing us. God chooses to promise a relationship never to be taken away. As God promises our faith parents, Abraham and Sarah, I will be your God and you will be my child. So God grants us promise through the gift of water and the Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that Slate, who is here to be baptized, may be given new life. Wash away his sins by the water and bring forth him as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. And you're very distracting because you've been smiling and you're very intense looking at me. <laughs> very. <laughs> to you be given all praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. So if you can lean him over a little bit. The water's warm, and it doesn't matter how much water you use because it's just a part of it. It's the Word of God that goes with us. So we'll see. I hear you like water. All right. Slate is baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Get a little, get a little hair wash. Slate, you've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you are marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was very calm. <laughs> now is a response to God's gift. Will you, as the parents and sponsors, promise to teach the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and the Lord's Prayer? Will you bring Slate to services of worship, provide for him for Christian education? And will you place in his hands the gift of the Holy Scripture, knowing that one day he will answer for himself? If so, answer, we will. Will you, now you all who are here, as the faith family of Slate, will you pray for him? Will you support him in his faith and in his Christian education? If so, respond, we will, with the help of God. And we do this kind of in this order uh, because regardless of how you answer, it doesn't take away that gift of, of, the, uh, of Slate's baptism. I've never had anybody say, no, I won't do that. But it's to know that this comes from God and not just from us as well. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we were baptized, and invite the, uh, those in the congregation as well to go along with this. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all of its empty promises? If so, say, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. May your light so shine that your light encourages Slate to live in the light of his baptismal promise. And you don't have to keep this lit the whole time. <laughs> but we light this off of um, kind of the Christ candle, knowing that Christ's light goes with you. And we have a few gifts that we'll give you, and one of them is a candle holder. So instead of putting this away in a box, it's to have it out and maybe on his baptismal anniversaries, bringing it out and lighting it and sharing stories. And if you burn through the whole thing, you can come get another one. So, <laughs> yep. All right. Please join together in the welcome. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. So we do have up here... Um, I'll kind of pass these over here. Certificates, oh, those are baptismal certificates. This is the faith chest. And so in there already is your uh, candle holder. And so maybe items, maybe a first children's Bible or some special things that's late. Uh, that's a little heavy. <laughs> uh, that can start be. So welcome. And can I... I like to carry them down. I do give, give the babies back. <laughs> Don't always want you. This one's good. <laughs> Welcome. Yes, you are just a sweetie. Look at you. Look at all these people. They're so happy to see you. Yeah. Yeah, even in the back. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. We'll move into our time of offering.
for our time of prayer. Our prayer list is on the back of your bulletins. Do we have any updates or additions today to our prayers? Okay, Jan? Jana, okay. Okay, yeah, she, okay. So Jana, sister-in-law, who ended up, she's a nurse and got stuck with a needle. So, yep, definitely. Uh, any other? Uh, our daughter-in-law, Rita, and her family need our prayers. Her mother, Adelina Carlovio, passed away this week. Her mother-in-law? Her mother. Her mother. Okay. What? Okay. okay. Yep. Well, filled by the Spirit, let us join the whole people of God in Christ Jesus in praying for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Gracious Lord, the unfolding of your words gives light to those who love your name throughout the world. Fill the hearts of those who preach and teach and share your word. Fill us with wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Your earth is filled with abundant life. We thank you for all that you have created. Help us to care for your gifts as well as be with those who are in the midst of uh, forest fires, uh, be with those who put their lives in danger to save structures and homes of others. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Righteous God, people of all nations, clamor for justice. Give their leaders understanding minds to discern between good and evil, to govern wisely, and listen to their suffering people. We play, pray, especially today, for all those places in our world that are in upheaval, Israel and Gaza, South Sudan, CAR, those who are mourning lost loved ones uh, due to plane crashes. We just ask for your guidance during these times. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful one, we trust that all things work together for good. Bring hope to those who have no job, who have no place to call home, others who may be in need, those who are mourning loss of loved ones, those who are healing, those who are in need in mind, body, and spirit. Especially today, we pray for Donovan, Brad, Peg, 
Susan, Eileen, Hannah, Gus, Diane Fluke's mother, her Devin, Vern, Ralph and Lois, Eric, Lisa, Charlie, Dan, Vero and Dale, Maverick, Lorraine, Barbara, Jim and Marcy, Colleen, Bill, Richard, Pat and Tom, Holly, Bruce, Michaela, Deanne, Dennis, Nancy, Geraldine, Jim, Jessica, Gary and Donna, Larry and Vera, for Jana, for the family of Louita at the death of her mother, for those who need healing for broken legs, those who are recovering from, from knee surgeries and hip surgeries, we ask for your guidance and your care. We also thank you for blessings of the newly baptized, especially Slate and his family. Lord, in your mercy. Search our hearts and minds and open the doors of this congregation and of the congregations of our community to those who will seek refuge or are in need of a place to belong, that all who come to us find shelter in our life together. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join together to pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You can read through the back of your bulletins for upcoming announcements. We do have a graduate blessing that'll be next Sunday, and there are a couple baskets in the back if you'd like to contribute items that you think would be uh, needed as they go off on their new journeys. I see there's hangers and laundry detergent and you know fun stuff like that that, that are in the baskets to help them out. Um, also, uh, anyone who would like to volunteer to cook the buffalo meat, that is available. Uh, you can pick that up today. Uh, reminder about when church council meets and also with the uh, fair coming up as well. Um, we do have a bouncy house again this year. We will need some, what? We yet. Oh, we haven't gotten it yet. Stay tuned. We'll let you know if we're, okay. Okay, we do need other help, though, for the kids' games and things. If you're around for that weekend and could do a couple-hour uh, volunteer slot, would be much appreciated, and we will stay tuned about the news about the bouncy house. <laughs> if we do get it, we do need some strong people to haul it and uh, open it up and such. Um, also check out, um, there's some special thanks to people who kind of do some things, they just kind of do them. I know Dan Martin, that we had some tree branches down and he got those cleaned out. I don't know who got that swing back sitting up, so thank you to whoever did that. That was heavy, it got knocked down in the wind. Um, and I know Cleon was over doing some weeding at the parsonage, so thank you. All these little, little things, small things, they definitely add up, so we appreciate those who are out there doing things that we don't even know about as well. Um, just so you know too, the Slate's family, uh, we do video the worship services, so if there's somebody who can't be here, those go on to the, our website and you can access them and it gives uh, somebody that ability to, to see uh, something like a baptism if they were not able to be here. So I wanted to let you know that as well. Any other announcements? And for those interested in seeing the TED Talk, it's already on Twitter and Facebook. Okay, so. okay, so that TED Talk is also connected on there as well. And I do highly recommend it, Everyday Leadership. It's very inspiring. Anything else? Okay. okay. We'll join together in our closing hymn, Shine Jesus Shine.